New developments coming in on a missing woman from Pacific Beach. She's been spotted on surveillance video. I'm Shannon Handy inside a refugee shelter in Tijuana, Mexico, housing people from Central America and Haiti. Why some here feel like they're being treated unfairly compared to Ukrainian refugees. There's big progress in the push to end train noise here in Encinitas. We'll have an update in a Working For You report. Plus, a California political consultant's ambitious plan to keep democracy alive in Ukraine. And we celebrate a San Marcos artist's moment in the sun. CBS 8 News Live at 6 starts now. We're just getting new information into our newsroom tonight about a missing Pacific Beach woman. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. I'm Marcella Lee. CBS 8's David Godfordson spoke to the woman's father who has flown from the East Coast to San Diego and is searching for his daughter. David's live at the missing woman's condo in Pacific Beach tonight with what we've just learned in the investigation. David. And Nicole Paré is 32 years old. She's been missing since Monday, but we've just gotten new surveillance photos of her taken in La Mesa. Let's take a look at those two photos just released within the last hour by the San Diego Police Department. Uh, it's, they, these photos were taken on Monday at 7 p.m. in the 7,000 block of University Avenue. That's like uh, University Avenue and uh, 70th, 70th Street. Uh, you can see in the photos that she is wearing a light colored tank top, multicolored pattern leggings and white sneakers. Uh, these are the latest photos. These are the last time she has been seen in public and her father literally is uh, beside himself searching for her. Let's take a look at the information that we have in our story and I'll come back live later. 32 year old Nicole Paré has been missing since Monday when she failed to pick up a family member at the airport. CBS 8 spoke to her father, Al Paré, on the phone, who told us he's afraid his daughter may be in a medical crisis. The father says a good Samaritan found his daughter's purse in La Mesa on Monday night with her cell phone inside. That good Samaritan used the phone to contact family members, but Paré is still missing. Other family members checked her residence in Pacific Beach in the 1200 block of Pacific Beach Drive, but they did not find her Audi sedan. The condo complex has a secure entrance in the back, and right now the street in front of the complex is closed due to construction. San Diego police tweeted out an alert Tuesday night saying Paré is a missing person at risk because she has never gone missing in the past. Paré is age 32, white, with blonde hair and brown eyes, 5 foot 2, about 130 pounds. Her vehicle, a 2017 Audi A5, with license plate number 7VAZ668, was spotted by law enforcement license plate readers in both La Mesa and Lemon Grove. CBS 8 called and emailed police looking for more information about Paré's disappearance, but they have not responded. In a series of tweets Tuesday night, police said at this point, there is no evidence that she's a victim of a crime. Now, more information that was just released by San Diego police. They have now located that Audi. They're, they're not saying where they located, but just tweeted out information within the hour that they have located her Audi. Now, I spoke to Paré's father about two hours ago, and he's waiting for permission from San Diego police detectives before he does any interviews with the news media. If you have seen Nicole Paré, needless to say, call San Diego police. David, you mentioned the possibility of uh, some kind of medical crisis. Uh, the, the woman's father saying that he thought she was going through a medical crisis. Did he give any details uh, of what he meant by that? He did not want to give any more details on than that. He described it initially as a medical emergency, and then he described it also as a medical crisis uh, when I spoke to him late this afternoon. Uh, the father flew out here from Massachusetts, and he is staying here in San Diego trying to find his daughter. All right, David Goffertson reporting live for us. Thanks, David. 
Law enforcement agencies in San Diego have a new agreement tonight that will change the way they investigate shootings by their officers. Just hours ago, law enforcement officials laid out new protocols for their approach whenever a deputy or officer kills someone. All of these measures are in place for one important reason, to truly strengthen the relationship with the people we serve. We must meet them at a place of trust and understanding. San Diego police will handle shootings involving deputies as well as several other law enforcement agencies around the county. Meantime, the sheriff's office will investigate shootings involving SDPD officers. There's also a promise to release videos of incidents within 45 days. The new protocols will go into effect May 1st. San Diego police just released body worn camera footage of a shooting in Tierra Santa. It's from last weekend when they say a man broke into a home and took a woman hostage. Vanessa, can you hear me? Police say the owner of the home on Viacha Drive had barricaded herself and her elderly father in a room, but they say the intruder forced her into another room at gunpoint and sexually battered her and held her captive. Officers went in and pulled the father to safety while one of them climbed on a neighbor's roof and fired several shots at the suspect through a window. No one was hit and the intruder was arrested. This incident comes on the heels of at least two other attempted break ins in the area. A man accused of shooting 10 people at a New York City subway station could face federal terrorism charges tonight. Police arrested Frank James today after they say he called the tip line from a McDonald's in Manhattan to turn himself in. All 10 people who were shot in Brooklyn yesterday morning are expected to survive. At least 29 people were treated for a number of different injuries related to the attack. We will have much more on today's arrest and what's next in the case coming up tonight in our second half hour. Tonight, city leaders in Encinitas are getting an earful from people who say the train noise in their neighborhood has gone from bad to worse. We first told you about the horns that violate federal laws several weeks ago, and we continue to press elected officials for answers. CBS 8 Steve Price is working for you to get answers and has tonight's new development. Steve. The push to stop loud train horns through Encinitas has left the station for good. It's one long, solid, obnoxious blast. We first told you about trains here violating the U.S. Department of Transportation's train horn rule last February, and that story helped spark a movement. Your story raised a lot more awareness. Pete Albanese lives a mile from the tracks, and take a look at this. His watch tracks his sleep. And you can see where you've been woken up, and it correlates to when the trains come through. Pete knows a lack of sleep can cause health issues, and it's not just him. 645 of his neighbors have signed a petition asking city leaders to create a quiet zone through here that will allow trains to pass without blowing their horn. What the people are asking for here isn't unique to Encinitas. In fact, there already is a quiet zone in this city about two miles from this station. It's located in Cardiff at Chesterfield Drive. We heard it for ourselves Wednesday afternoon, this train blowing by with no horn. So why is this a quiet zone and not the area around the Encinitas station? Working for you, we went to Councilman Tony Kranz for answers. Um, this intersection, Lucadia Boulevard, is only has two gates. Um, we have to put up two more for quad gates to keep cars from trying to go around. Cran says four intersections would have to add the extra gates at a cost of around $2 million each, money the city doesn't have. So why did the Cardiff area get it? Lucky timing. Turns out another project was already planned for this area, allowing the city to save a fortune. Um, we took advantage of the fact that Sandag was, was paying a big chunk of that project. Cran says some residents don't want the city spending money on a quiet zone because the people complaining knowingly bought homes near the tracks. But he says there are a lot more trains going through here now and at all hours. At tonight's city council meeting, he's going to ask that money be approved to study the design and engineering of a quiet zone with the hope they can get state and federal money to help pay for the final construction. In Encinitas, Steve Price, CBS 8, working for you. And if there is a story that you'd like us to look into, just email us at yourstories at cbs8.com. A wildly strobing light on a Rancho Bernardo Street will shine steady tonight. After viewers gave us a heads up about the irritating and dangerous problem, we're working for you and got results. CBS 8's Anna Laurel explains how it all came together. 
On Monday, Donna Myers told me about a neighborhood's problem, so I went to see for myself. What I found was an obnoxious light and a lot of frustration. A street light flashed so intense at night it would blind them if they were driving on the road and it would blink into their homes all night, even making some of them sick. I made sure they had it reported on the city's Get It Done app. That's when I found out it would take nearly a year to fix. This service is currently impacted. Please allow up to 261 days. You're driving in darkness, so to speak. As you round that curve, all of a sudden, the flickering of the strobe effect of the street light hits you. The city says there's a backlog of 5,000 street complaints, but because I called city council member Monty Von Wilpert, they called the city's transportation department and upped it on the priority list because of the public health concerns out there for those neighbors. So tonight, that light is fixed, no more flashing, and that's why we are working for you. Here at CBS 8, I'm Anna Laurel. Good to see some results. Yeah, I mean, that strobing light was just too much of a distraction, too dangerous. I, I couldn't imagine driving down that street. Mm -hmm.